Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I, as always, am Alex. Well, for one more episode. Well. I, I don't know I what you turn into. I have always been Alex. And you will continue to be Alex, but not Alex of Delve. You'll have to be Alex of something else. Elf of Lockshire? Yes. Of Loxley. That one. Thanks. Yeah, that one. You're going to be Alex of Loxley. That's perfectly fine. Do you wear tights? Probably not. Um, <laughs> not when you're at the computer. Anyway, yeah. yeah, exactly. You wouldn't want to be constrained that way. Okay, so so uh, we have arrived, finally, at the very last episode of Delve. The ultimate episode of Delve. The ultimate episode. It has all culminated to this moment right here. The showdown. The showdown. And don't worry, folks, we will definitely disappoint. So, uh, on this episode, we're, we're going to do a few fun things. Uh, finally, after this long, we're finally going to do something fun. Doesn't oh, that sound... finally, good. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting this whole time. You've been waiting so many years for us to finally do something fun on this show. <laughs> Congratulations. The day has come. And then we close the doors. So that's how this works. This is the last opportunity that we are going to have to ask this question. So I'm going to take it. We talk about mechanics and design on the show quite a bit. Uh, but the one thing we have not discussed the design of is Delve itself. Oh, there's no design there. So the question I have is, can we actually explain what the mechanics of the show are? Can we actually break it down and explain how this actually worked, if at all? Did it work? That's a great question. I think, uh, depending on who you ask, the answers are going to vary greatly. <laughs> For instance, if you were to ask me and Alex, the answer would be no. But um, I'm, I'm going to say that if you look at the outset of this, the mechanic was that you essentially have the straight man and the wacky man. It's, it's a very Abbott and Costello sort of formula. The real question there becomes, which one of us was which? I think the fact that we never really decided is probably <laughs> the biggest problem. That was the downfall. We had a straight man and a wacky man, and we both played each part all the time. <laughs> when we got to the who's on first sketch, we both said, what? And then the whole thing went away. Yeah, I I, th I think that the general mechanics that we came into it uh, with was the idea that you're going to have somebody who is... Uh, sort of like how we were talking about with the uh, the hero's journey is you know you have you you have the guy that's going on the hero's journey and you have somebody who has kind of already been experienced in this who comes in and said I'll show you how to get there and um, probably to Sesame Street but wherever you happen to be leading you were kind of trying to to get me there I don't know if you succeeded or not. Um, I think the failure along that, if you want to go with the hero's journey as that aspect, the failure there is uh, where I kind of was like, here, you need to go here. Usually that person leaves or dies. Right. And I did neither. Right. So right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm sorry, too. If you, uh, had, if you had cut me out of the show like four years ago, you'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> if you had fallen down a shaft or something, this would have worked. Yeah, exactly. It would have been oh. like, oh, I need to avenge my fallen master. <laughs> okay, okay. But, you know, in a lot of ways, usually they keep coming back anyway. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess Obi-Wan did not really go away. Neither did Gandalf. He just he he went from being Gandalf the Great to Gandalf the White, you know. He was he was on his own hero his own hero's journey, right? Right. His hero's journey 
um, to find a color scheme that worked for him. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, th- I don't know if he ever succeeded. Um, I I like the one that was, what was the brown wizard? Or Radagast? Sure. I, was her. I don't know. Had a lot of bird stuff in his hair. Anyway, um, I think that we're kind of proving that the other mechanic of Delve is to get off on very long tangents. Or just a bunch of them. Just basically, it's a it, it's a bunch of subplots with no actual main plot line. That's, that sounds so well right, yeah. Yeah, actually, I think so. I think we have effectively broken down how this show worked. Finally! It's taken so long. <laughs> yeah. I think we could kind of explain what we were doing here. I don't know if you could say that about every episode, though. A, lo- uh, a lot of the episodes, we just kind of... Frankly, we were winging it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there was a lot of rambling in 90% just winging it. There were a lot of times, like the behind the scenes part of this is is there were a lot of times where uh, Alex and I uh, got in and said, okay, we got to do an episode. And then we would sit here and we would think to ourselves, but what will that episode be about? Yeah, there. the only time there was really any planning uh, on our behalf was when we had an interview. Yeah, and that that's that is probably the most actual effort that we had put into the episodes was when we had to coordinate schedules. That's <laughs> oh god, that, schedules. Oh, that was always the hardest part too. We've talked to people from like every time zone practically. <laughs> And sometimes multiple time zones in the same interview. That was always fun when we're like, hey, what time zone are you? And they're like, I'm in Australia. And the other person's like, I'm in Hong Kong. And it's like, oh, oh boy. Yeah. And we're like, yeah. East Coast, USA. Yeah. And uh, and it's, it's bedtime for somebody. And it's, you know, somebody's waking up early. Did, we definitely just... had someone that was like, they had like a six hour time difference from each other and we had like a fourteen yeah. hour time difference, I think. I don't remember who it was, but I remember that it was like, Alright, somebody's gonna be awake at some strange time for this. Oh yeah. This is gonna be this is gonna be hard. Um the I'd say that the majority of the people that we had that were uh in like a foreign country though, they most of them were in England. We had quite a few that were from that, and so I've gotten used to the fact that, like, England is a five-hour time difference from us. I've just, like, gotten that stuck in my head now. Oh, yeah, um, it's really fun when you're talking to people and you just randomly throw it there, like, oh, yeah, Hong Kong, it's like a it's like a nine-hour time difference. They're like, how do you know that offhand? It's like, well. Well, we've talked to a few people. So we know. <laughs> How do you know Australia is a fourteen-hour time difference? I'm like thirteen, they don't have. <laughs> they don't have uh, daylight savings time. You forgot about the daylight savings time. You can't forget about that. Yeah, I I think that that was probably one of the biggest things that we had to kind of learn along the way, uh, was that people don't exist in the same time. They uh they have to exist in multiple times, and then yeah. you have to coordinate it all. It's uh annoying. No, uh, aside from the time zone thing, a lot of the prep work for that was like, all right, we're talking to, you know, X person. It's like we're talking about uh, this topic or this, like, their game. And it was kind of learning a bit about the game. And I think that was more so on your side. Yeah. uh, Where you're like, yeah, I'm going to learn, find out a little bit. You did more of the prep work. Let's be real here. (laughs) Right, right. Um, Well, well, like, a a lot of interviews, especially the ones that you set up that that you had already kind of done research for, uh, people, when they listen back on the catalog, will will notice that when you're more talkative in some of those interviews, it's because you were doing the active research because it was projects that you really had a vested interest in, like when we were talking about the white box, for instance. Yeah. That, that's that's one that you had actually researched quite a bit. And there were some of the, the maybe the larger creators that were on the show where you had kind of like looked back on that catalog a little more in depth uh, to try and uh, get, get some better context for it. Yeah. Which is, you know, I, I come from a reporter background, so my normal thought process is um that I, that I want to at least kind of go into a bio and just look at what people do. If you're new to doing interviews, um probably not a great idea to go in cold. 
I'm not saying that we haven't done that. <laughs> there, there have definitely been a lot of times where pretty much all I knew was, like, who the guest was and what the game name was, and that was... Oh, there were times you only knew the guest and didn't know the game. Yeah, I didn't even know the game. But that one was a surprise because it was about bears. It was about bears. Yeah. It was, and that was that was terrific. But there were a lot where I didn't know how to pronounce the name of the game. <laughs> oh, Shizando? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's pronounced Shizando. I'm pretty sure I got that right, finally. I finally got that right. There were uh, there were a lot of times, too, where uh, we, I, I would know the general idea of the game, but I would have absolutely no context for what they wanted to do with it. Yeah. Um, and so you you just kind of have to roll with it as best as you can and try to actively listen. See, the uh, thing I liked... Uh, about doing that and part of the reason i didn't always want to do the more of the research on the games that we're talking about mm. is because i really enjoyed having the people like explain how the game was like played and what the game was about so that i could just be like all right well these are the questions that come to my mind oh yeah whereas sometimes you read it and you kind of have preconceived uh notions about what's going on but going in cold that way it's like all right tell me about your game and then i can ask questions that I'm thinking right as you tell me, like, these are the things that come to mind and make me wonder, and I want to know. Well, the, there is definitely a style. I think Larry King had a tendency to do this. He, he, he proudly talked about how, like, I go in with no notes. I go in with no information. Because the whole interview, I should be a blank slate uh, going in. And then I learn everything that I need to know when the interview is going on. There's definitely a style that goes along with that and you can do it it, it is a, a bit of an acquired taste so I, I think if you're if you're listening to people doing that kind of interview and it is definitely a skill that you have to pick up if you're not used to interviewing people yeah um but there's definitely a, especially i guess from my end one of the reasons why i probably didn't research people all that much is because if i'm coming into it from the perspective of being the novice that doesn't know what's going on it's going to sound a little strange if i sudden somehow know what's going on yeah um from a, from a context standpoint you know you had to stay in character i, I had to stay yeah and I suppose that that's probably one of the things with the, the general formula that ends up being a little bit hard is that when we started out, I I was the I don't know anything guy. And then you would explain to me how mechanics work. And then there's there's a point where I sort of have to, in, in a lot of ways, play a character that is that and not be that anymore. <laughs> Because you you inherently learn and grow as the series goes on. Yeah, I don't think you stayed uh, not knowing about anything to do with games for the full five years. No, and if I were to, uh, you know, sometimes I genuinely didn't know what was going on. And when that happened, that's blissfully terrific. But most of the time, uh, I did kind of have to remind myself, like... Right. I don't, I'm not supposed to really know much of what's happening here. Um, so I'm going to have to just kind of get back into that mental state so that I can, I can ask fresh questions. But yeah, after, after six years, that gets kind of tricky. <laughs> so the, so then you have to start asking questions that are more uh, in depth or are uh, more complex, which is a, a little bit trickier because... Sometimes the people that you're asking don't necessarily know the answers to those complex questions. And, and then you're, you're in a quandary <laughs> of what you're supposed to do next. It's the kind of the fatal flaw that we set up a, um, set up a formula that's really good until it can't actually work anymore. I, I think, thinking back on it now, if you wanted to do that same Dell formula we had at the beginning of... Yeah. A, a complete novice and someone who kind of knows uh, a bit more and they're kind of trying to figure things out as they go. You'd have to get a pair of people, I think, who were interested in tabletop games 
And that one person who knew nothing would have to never play a tabletop game for the entire duration. Right. And there was only really so long I could do that before uh, before it ended up kind of coming to me. And uh, then once it started to present itself to me, I kind of couldn't turn it down endlessly <laughs> to to play, to run, to to get into the actual mechanics. People wanted me to look at different stuff and and give opinions on stuff and I was like oh I guess I kind of have to and I I considered that all a learning experience yeah um, if you wanted to continue I, with that format it would have to be definitely someone who went into it being a complete novice and staying a complete novice there'd be no growth there yeah but it would also you you'd have that air of the uh, again, the blissful ignorance of being able to ask questions without a air of knowing anything. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. works for a lot, but sure. I think after even e even after five years, six years of doing that, that trope yeah. would get old. It becomes a trope. Yeah, it and... becomes just, all right, you're yeah. a character and you've apparently learned nothing, but it's like, no, you've right. well, you've definitely learned something, you've just never given yourself the opportunity to play a game at that point. Um, right. If that's right. what you were doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think it's the, like, even sitcoms eventually evolve because they realize that the situation that they're, they're in can't last forever. <laughs> yes, it can. They're still at the same coffee shop and friends. Um, yeah, but I mean, their relationships all change. Like, a lot of stuff in Friends change. Everything but the location and where they are and what they're doing in life changes. And their catchphrases. The catchphrases don't ever change, and, do they? And their general personalities. Those stay um, the same or those change? No, they, they, they stay the same. Okay. Yeah. Joey still wants to know how you doing. After <laughs> eight, after ten years. Still wants to know how you're doing. So. I guess if you wanted to run a podcast like a filter of nostalgia, yeah, that kind of thing would work. Yeah. I don't think it, most people v listen to podcasts for the, oh, everything's always the same. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think that's... You wouldn't want to listen to a podcast where every episode was exactly the same as the last episode um and, I mean, and, and i i don't know if like a sitcom formula or like those sort of things would work very well as a podcast just as a general i think serial podcasts can work really well i know welcome to night vale is a, an episodic oh, you sure. know podcast that tells stories it has the same f format type mm. but it tells a different story or it tells yeah. continuations of stories. Sure. And then it sure. loops back around and tells stories that they've told before in different ways. But, you know, it still has the a familiar format and characters, but the characters still grow. Right. Right. It's it's actually kind of... Um, it feels very unrealistic if you don't have characters grow both in character and out of character. Uh, and with podcasts... You you don't usually have people playing characters, except for, like, you mentioned, you know, uh, Night Vale. Obviously, you have actors that are playing parts. Uh, but as, uh, you know, most podcasts are pretty much people just talking as themselves. Uh, th those people have to get something out of the experience. Like, they have to uh, grow in some way, shape, or form from the information that they have taken in and the conversations that they have had. And if not, it's all completely pointless. <laughs> um, that they, they went through that process in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's a fine balance to that. I keep thinking now, like, as, as we wrap up here, um, if I were to give advice to people... Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if I was get, going to give advice to people not on tabletop gaming, we know oh, that okay. I'm, still not, no, no, I'm, I'm still not very good at that. But if I were to give advice to people on uh, if they wanted to make a podcast sort of like we made Delve, what information would I want to give them? Um, and, Don't. And, yeah, <laughs> what do you got? We, we, we already went down that road. Don't do it. 
<laughs> just don't do it. Don't do it. I I'm going to I'm going to give a good piece of advice for people that are putting on any kind of show or doing anything and really any kind of creative type is going to already know this. But for those of you who are just starting out, understand that whatever you think you're going to make that is going to be super easy to do is about five times harder than you currently think it's going to be. That sounds about right. Yeah. And it is going to also take about five times as long. <laughs> or five years as long. It's going to take about five, six, we're at six years, um, six years as long. Um, yeah, every, every time you turn around and think to yourself, well, hey, you know what? It's going to be super easy. I'm going to do this and this and this and then coast. No, nope, sorry, not going to work. There are there are thousands of people who thought that and it, it, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Uh, you know, it's, it's a long process. It is definitely going to be work. Um, it can occasionally be stressful. The only thing, though, that I would encourage you about would be that um, if when you actually produce a product, when you actually produce something that you are really happy with, it is a really good feeling. You, right. You, you actually do have a wonderful sense of accomplishment. Hey, I did that thing. And it's sort of chasing that. That's chasing the reason why. The dragon. Just chasing the Dungeons and Dragon of the whole thing uh that is the reason why people continue to to do creative endeavors um and but it's it's not easy and anyone who says that it is has has lied to you <laughs> um you know I, I, even even things that you might think are are the simplest things in the world like i'm going to do a i'm going to do a 5 minute podcast and it's going to be about this this and this okay well that's great, but now you have to have the audio equipment set up, you have to know how to do the audio mixing, you have to get the programs necessary, you have to know how to actually get your podcast onto all of the podcast apps, you need to have graphic art work done, do you need music under your podcast, how is it laid out, you know, there's there's so much more to it than you think until you do it, and I I worry, though, that there's a lot of people that will start that process, they might have a great idea. You might have a really great idea, and you're going to start that process with that really great idea and then get bogged down in all of those other things and dr and stop because you think to yourself, oh, no, I didn't know it was going to be that hard. But for those of you who, you know, push through that and get something out there, I will tell you that you will be very happy with the accomplishment that you did get it out there. Not a lot of people can do that. Um you know, there's there's thousands and thousands of people that will try, and uh, a lot of them won't want to go through that process. But if you do, you're part of the thousands and thousands that did. <laughs> the, the, the smaller number of people who did. And you should be, feel very proud of yourself about that. Um, you know, uh, I can't tell you that every episode of Delve was, was like a, a diamond <laughs> oh no, content. definitely not. <laughs> no. But the fact is we, we we kept doing it. We kept, you know, pushing through and saying, "Okay, that might not have worked, but whatever. We got another episode to do." And if we had stopped the moment we had one bad episode, <laughs> we would have run <laughs> three episodes in. <laughs> Uh, one. <laughs> I was giving us a be I was giving it the benefit of episode two. Okay, so two. <laughs> but the thing is, is that if we it, like the first episode did not go very well at all. <laughs> it really it sounded terrible. Um, it, it, there there I think we were literally at an airport when we recorded that. Must have been. <laughs> sounded like it. Um, if we had quit after that, um. Yeah, that we wouldn't have as many episodes as we do today. And, uh, but you know, then episode two happened, and three and four and five and six, and, and you know, things picked up, and we ended up with great interviews and really, really interesting things. And hopefully, a few people got stuff out of it. And that's great. We're always happy when we hear people give us that feedback, you know. Um, and, and I guess the other thing that I would say is that if you are able to actually get feedback, um, 
be very happy you got the feedback. Uh, it, it, it comes very rarely, but you will appreciate it so much when you get it, especially if it's constructive. Yes. Um, how many episodes, I think we did at least a couple episodes where we talked about the importance of feedback. Yeah, even, even, uh, yeah, we definitely did, because even for, like, playtesting, if any feedback is good feedback for that yeah. instance, because negative connotations are good to see what people don't like yep. in a game design. Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as it's constructive, it's good. Negative isn't always good, because you feel like it's like, oh, well, they didn't like the thing. Sure. I guess I shouldn't do anything like it, but... Mm. You try to take away from that that it's something people don't like and you can change it into something they do like. Right, right. Um, th- there's definitely a huge difference, too, between um, the the bad feedback of your thing sucks and bad feedback as in this thing didn't really make sense to me and I don't think that it really worked in the context that you were putting forward. Um, maybe, maybe you should try something different with it. Uh, that's the difference between, like, like, useless notes and constructive notes in filming. <laughs> where, where somebody, where you might actually have somebody who gives you notes that are actually constructive to the, the, the point of what you're trying to make. Uh, or somebody else will come up and say, you should just all wear hats. You should all just wear hats. Yeah. Maybe even distressed dad hats. <laughs> we'll promote our new new merch on the episode. That's great. Uh, coming soon, folks. Coming soon. Actually, you can order now, but we're not going to get into that right now. Hopefully, that kind of gives you an insight into kind of like the making of the show and also what we had learned and uh, advice if you wanted to make one all of your own. Of course, the the real advice is probably don't. Probably. No, the real advice is if you want to, do it. <laughs> and then hate the first episode you do it, and then try again. <laughs> On, uh, honestly, there is a really important thing that you have to understand, no matter what kind of artistic or creative endeavor that you're making. Understand that about the first ten things that you make are going to suck. It is it is a rare occasion where the first thing that you co- want to make out of the gate is going to be great. Mm. It, it that is That is very rare. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of misses before you have a hit. Uh, but that's important because the misses inform what the hit is. So don't don't feel bad about that. It's, it's in a lot of ways why we try so many different things and why we don't focus too greatly on like when something doesn't work and say, well, that's the end of everything. Because it means we're just going to try something different and see if that works and you know eventually something does and it's great it's great so um so with that being said alex it is the time finally to give the time is nigh (laughs) to give uh final thoughts before the rock slide hits and carries us away the the final thoughts on oh boy yeah it's kind of hard, isn't it? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> just end our, right fi- our, final, our final thoughts are just, are just goodbye. Yep, that's the final thoughts. Just bye, and then cut it, like, just with, a, with a rock slide right there. Just cut it, the rock slide comes, it carries us away, and just perfect. Yeah, I, I don't really know if we have really any final thoughts. I think we've pretty much given them over the last few episodes. Yeah, I, uh, um, that's what this entire wind down has been. Pretty much. And we do appreciate all of the feedback that we've gotten uh, over over those last few episodes. It seems like a, a lot of our like super fans that are out there really appreciate it. Uh, so glad, glad you're liking it. Um, Want to thank... All of our uh, patrons that are out there, not just our shiny level patrons, uh, Bonnie Ainsworth uh, and um, Drunk Paul. Uh, and and, I, and all the past patrons who may not be donating anymore or absolutely. had to stop for whatever reason, but did support us at some point in time. Oh, yeah. uh, we're thankful for that over the years as well. 
yes. Yeah. Uh, because we, we have had many patrons over the years, and I do want to thank them very much, because even, even the small amounts that might have been given or for the period of time that you were here, uh, that is uh, very important. It, it keeps us financed and allows us to continue to do new things, and even the new project that we're going to be working on now uh, a, a lot of it is due to the fact that we had some amount of funding to work with to begin with. So uh, very, very thankful for that. I want to thank all the guests that we had on the show. Oh, all uh, of them. So many of them. All of them. Even if you were just coming on to promote a Kickstarter, I understand. You you know, you're, you're trying to get your thing out there. But the fact that you wanted to come onto the show and you trusted us with being able to talk about your game is um you know we sometimes it might feel like we complained about how many kickstarters we talked about but it is also a, a real honor to be able to talk to up-and-coming game developers and established ones and um get their feedback on what they're doing and the cool things that they're trying to create oh yeah I know, and we definitely did complain a few, especially me. It was like, eh, we're talking about Kickstarter a bit too much. Games we're not actually playing and have never played. And it's just like, all right. But, like, talking to the people is still always cool. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and we, we wanted to, we, we genuinely did want to be able to promote new creators that needed a signal boost for whatever we could do. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. It, it got a little Bernie Audi, <laughs> just with the, the number that we were doing at the yeah. time. Yeah, and, and I'm sure on the new show we'll do similar. We'll have that once in a while. I know uh, you and I have mentioned to each other that we would like to be able to talk to people and be like, hey, they've got a Kickstarter coming out. If you can and you like their project, go support it. Right. But, like, I feel like it won't be an all-the-time thing. It'll be no more so... When it's a project we actually like and want right. to talk about. Right, right. Uh, it, it, chances are a lot of them will probably be us contacting them uh, about certain things that, that are coming up. And also I think a lot of them that are coming on, we might be talking about other other topics besides just that. Yeah. Uh, and And then we will also make note of the fact that it's going on. Uh, and we've, we've also talked about the possibility on the show of making note of a few different Kickstarters that are ongoing that either got funded or had started, maybe at the front, just uh, something real quick, just to let people know about some neat things that are happening. We do want uh, a lot of these game developers to succeed because it's good for the industry. It's also good for the fact that we're in it in some capacity in the media sector. Um and, uh, and it's good when you have a lot of new creators that are coming up and providing something interesting and innovative into the, the sphere. That's just good all around for people. So we want to still encourage that. Um, additionally, I want to thank all the people that actually worked with us on the site. I want to thank, uh, obviously, Dom, who worked with us for, for quite a bit. We had a few different people that did articles for us. I want to thank everybody who, you know, uh, contributed to, like, Developer's Diaries and, and all of that. Uh, your contributions are always welcome. It's always great when we have more voices than just the two of ours, because we often get tired of listening to each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty much all the time. <laughs> but uh, thank thank you all to, uh, to everyone that helped there. Uh, I want to also uh, take the opportunity to thank Matt Soul, who uh, gave us the flare riff to use in the show. And, uh, you know, we'll have to figure out music for the new one. But you've heard that at the beginning and end of basically every episode of, this <laughs> of Delve. And uh, we do appreciate it. His, uh, his contribution. Also, the people that helped to sponsor the show, like Battle Bards, when they were on. Um, that was that was terrific. I definitely appreciate all the cool music that you, you let me toil around with. Alex, you and I basically are the show, uh, have been the show, but it does feel like without everybody else that has been at least tangentially involved with it, it really wouldn't have been anything. Oh. Definitely. It, it, even though it's like you and I, 
as you said, we're we, you and I are the show, but there's a lot more people that have had their hands on it and oh, yeah. in it over the years. What yeah. it may not be in the production or the creation standpoint of it, but between again all the all the people who've helped contributed uh, behind the scenes, who have given us uh, their support, who have given us uh, articles and material and content, and interviews and their voices. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody else that's been on the show in some capacity, yeah, yeah, it just it wouldn't be the same. No. It it certainly wouldn't, and that's why we are hoping that when we uh you know start up the the new thing, when we start up the the TPK, uh there will definitely be more than well actually the three of us working on stuff. Uh, there will definitely be a lot of contributions to be made. Uh, we um we should also probably the last thank you that we should probably do is to our community that we built that we usually talk to over on our Discord. I thought you were going to say the now defunct Mad Adventure Society. Oh, actually, I should make note of that first. <laughs> Mad Adventure Society and Fiddleback, uh, we really should thank for getting this show launched and started. And, uh, you know, we probably wouldn't have known exactly what to do in the first place <laughs> if, if if the folks over at Mad Adventure Society weren't there to, to help us through that. And that has been gone for a little while now. Yeah. Um, several years actually, so, but uh, still back to our roots. So, yes, absolutely. And, we should uh, uh good launching pad. <laughs> we should uh, we should see about getting a Mad Adventure Society reunion show. Oh, on the new one, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, new yeah. One. I I bet we can do that. Well, you know, the reunion show seems to be like everywhere right now. Does Everyone's it? rebooting. Oh, Re- everyone's rebooting everything, so we might as well <laughs> we might as well do a reunion. There's gonna be a friends reunion. Maybe we can we get to see hear Joey say how you doing again. <laughs> so yes, Mad Adventure Society. Uh, you're right. I definitely need to thank them, but I also need to thank all the folks that we have met over on our uh, Discord because that community that we've built over there is terrific. And we are so happy that it looks like pretty much everybody who is actively participating is also going to be moving over to the new server. Um, But uh, their feedback and uh, the notes that they give us on episodes are terrific. (laughs) and, And I love the fact that it feels like there are people out there who think about and and <laughs> relay information more deeply than we probably even put into the episodes to begin with. <laughs> That's, that is that is amazing. I still I'm still floored by that. Um, so so uh, a big thank you to all of them. We will be more than happy to see you uh, on the next on the next show and yeah. the big launch coming up. So. And especially where uh, neither of us are really as active on Twitter so much, I don't think. Not as um, much, no. It's really nice to have just that community space of our own that's a lot more, uh, a lot smaller than, say, yeah. just shouting out to Twitter and hoping you get people to reply to you. Sure. Uh, it's just nice to be able to have that environment with people that, you know, kind of listen to you and enjoy what you do sure. um, and have feedback for it. And you can just talk about other things, too, and just like you know i it's it's more a place where it's like all right we're kind of all friends here um mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. would definitely consider uh some of the people that are there like people i've grown to become friends with at least um, oh yeah yeah and it's it's nice to have that it's it's our our discord community is small but i don't mind that no 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 um and, uh, I mean, it's definitely bigger than when it started. So, but not much. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Um, and we'll, we'll see how big the, the new one is, but, uh... Well, the, like... new, the new one's a community server, so it's discoverable on Discord. Gotcha. Um, but we can also have that, uh, call to action, like, hey, if you want to discuss this topic, you can join us on the Discord. And right. we'll be talking about that, other things, and uh, you can tell us topics you want us to talk about, all that right. fun stuff. We're going to try to do better at the, the the whole 
integration thing, the call to action thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to try to just do things a bit better on the new show. Right. We are going to try to take everything that we learned here. Yeah, and... things that we learned. Yeah, I don't know if we really learned all that much, but whatever we did learn, we're going to try to translate over uh, to the new show so that we can launch strong and we can be in a little bit more of a of a finished state when we actually start rather than trying to kind of like work it out as we go, uh, which is which is great. And I think the one big thing that we can take away from Delve is that if we if we had not done Delve, we wouldn't really be able to do Total Pebble Knockdown at all. I mean, we even took the name from a thing on Delve. So. Yeah, we're stealing everything from Delve. We are we are moving out of the apartment, but we are taking all the furniture. <laughs> yeah, we're taking we're taking those curtains. <laughs> we're taking the curtains. We're taking the unicorn. We're taking Josiah. We're taking <laughs> Maybe we can leave the unicorn with Josiah behind. Nope. They're coming. They are coming. There's going to be a billion callbacks on the new show that no one's going to understand. No one will understand. Well, no one will understand unless they heard the old show. We're we're going to have to come up. No, you know what? We're going to have This is going to be the hardest thing about the new show. We're going to have to come up with, oh my God, so many new things to reference. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Here, just for everyone listening, now Nathan is also getting this now. This is how we like to, to do our little not meetings that we have, where we just kind of get together to discuss things for the show. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's when Nathan or I come to the other and go, so I had this thought about this thing we can do. Yeah. Uh, so I had this thought about this thing we can do as I was looking at the tabloids at work. Oh, God. Where we can come up with um, a tabloid type deal from the gaming industry. Oh, beautiful. That we can just kind of make a whole silly either segment or a whole ass episode that's just silly where we kind of be like, huh, five easy ways to make bigger fireballs. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a, so a little less like Weekly World News and a, a little bit more like Cosmopolitan. Either or. <laughs> Cosmo okay. or Weekly World News would be fine. <laughs> you, you know, if we do Weekly World News, we have to like put a stat block together for Bat Boy. <laughs> Bat Boy and you, what are the chances of sublime romance? <laughs> Dexterity, meh. Charisma, <laughs> high. Charisma, exactly. <laughs> so, so that was charisma's through the roof. <laughs> so that was just an idea I had, and everyone's getting it now, including Nathan. I thought it would be an interesting, and potentially hilariously fun, uh, little thing we could do sometimes. Oh, that sounds that sounds good. We gotta we gotta do that because I know um, you, Nathan, love to stretch your creativity. Oh, I certainly do. I certainly do. I need to get together uh, some stuff so that we can mock that up. Uh, yeah, do a news cover and the whole yeah, thing. do a mock up news cover. We'll Ooh. we'll let you do that because we have a graphic designer who does not need to deal with that. No, no, uh, Crave doesn't need to have to deal with that. That that's uh, a whole level of bullshit. I don't think she'll want. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna have to get a different program for that. I <laughs> back when I worked at the paper, there was a whole uh uh program that you would use to actually lay out the pages and everything, and that would be terrific right now. But I don't have that program. <laughs> oh well, so, you know. We we thought that th probably the best way to actually end the show would be to have all of the voices, or at least most of the voices that have been on the show. Uh, give your a uh, little bit of a retrospect. You know, a Alex, you occasionally joke about how there's probably a good half hour of good content from the show. I I found it <laughs> and I compiled it together into oh, a good. montage. We've got just a, a half hour montage of all the good bits of the show. So if you've missed if you've missed the previous three hundred episodes of the show, we've compiled all the good stuff into one half hour. Well, as much as I could. That's what, uh, 30 without, seconds a show? Uh, no. Far less. <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds a show? Uh. I'm bad at math. 
1800 seconds, right? 1800. Yeah, what, six seconds? It was close. It must be six. Yeah, it's, it would be six seconds to show. That's right. I, I expect there to be six seconds from every single show in the next half hour. You're going to be disappointed. I'm usually disappointed. <laughs> There's only so much I could go through. I, I had to start thinking about like things that I liked in different episodes that I remember. You could find a half hour worth of things you liked. Uh, I, I, I could find a half hour of things I kind of remember liking. <laughs> Fair. So there was that. Um, so, uh, I figured since this will be the last time we really have the flare riff to play us out, I would just let that, uh, let that run, play us out to the sounds of what was Delve. There you go. And so, for the very last time, I was Nathan. And I continue to be Alex. <laughs> and this was Delve. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Delve. I am Nathan, and this is... This is Alex. And he can finally take the cue, that's yeah. good to know. Free tries later. Uh, first patient coming right through. Now, you might notice that they are having a very serious problem in that they are on fire. <laughs> um... I, I was going to say, you could have, like, a sword that hits another sword and then slides down it so you get the exactly. scratch of metal on metal. That's right. You know, it hits, hits the hilt and you hear the shink. One that's covered in jello. Well, that might not be a very specific That'd be idea, interesting. But... Long sword of jello plus two? Yeah. yeah gelatinous it, Exactly. Sort of exactly. It's uh, delicious. I was actually saying, when you were talking about the, um, the watching movies for sound effects, have you ever thought about just, like, putting a movie in, muting it, and making a playlist for it to see if the sound sounds like what was going on in the movie. No, but that's a really good idea. I like it. <laughs> if you see a game called Bicycapade show up on the Game Crafter, you should probably just flag that account. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a lot of uh, of things that we have to go over before there's a prototype. There's um, It depends on what kind of flag should I put on it. Should I mark it VIP? <laughs> Market for destruction, I think. Little cartoon lice with little skates on them for the lice capades. Oh, That's the box art. The the sort of not rhyme, but the logic that hats go on soldiers, soldiers go on sheep, sheep get abducted onto spaceships, and spaceships can besiege castles, and so castles hat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I, golf is actually too exciting my taste uh, i used to play golf but i couldn't get the ball in the clown's mouth anymore so i just gave it up i, I would like to recreate the breakfast club with with monsters right i, I was thinking that one as well Thank that's you. good you one. go for go for it these most ideas i say are free yeah <laughs> unless they're like for my own game he's a benevolent but very selfish i'm like, I'm like santa claus You're, of the ideas and krampus all at the same time oh, you've achieved balance Ah, yes, you yes. It's why I have a uh, Ouroboros, a double Ouroboros tattoo on my right arm. Nope, my left arm. And, and they're in black and white. Double Ouroboros? Yes, Nathan. It's a miracle. What does it mean? You're... Oh, that's a rainbow. Yeah. Or Ouroboros is uh, great. And it was a Pokemon, wasn't it? No. <laughs> Nathan, you're fired. It was a world serpent. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say that. You're, you're fired on so many levels. You could be building the greatest game known to history, but no one will know about it if you don't tell them. At what point does it become just boring to have to follow the mechanics? If you're sitting there for an hour at the table, factoring out healing, factoring, okay, we're done with this combat, now let's spend half an hour figuring out different healing things, spells... Okay, well now we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna attend to the mechanics of the game for a half hour after this battle. And, and uh, funnily enough, a cockatoo has just landed on my balcony. It just <laughs> randomly <laughs> land on your balcony? Uh, yeah, well, in, in this this particular area, sort of live near the mountains, so uh, yeah, cockatoos everywhere. And they, we fed them cake a couple of weeks ago, and they've been coming back every every day since then. So. <laughs> Australia, the land of wonder. <laughs> just, just to sort of feed into your images of, of what's... Thank you. Of, no, uh, no, life. thank you. I need to reinforce this image. Now I go to another bar. Your character becomes embroiled in a black market topiary ring. 
you, you have no idea what I'm talking to. <laughs> Go on, I have an idea. Okay, okay, so I have wandered in through another backroom door that obviously says, Keep out, topiary ring. <laughs> there are behind there. So yeah. you're telling me, like, choosing your own adventure novel just leads me to the same spot every single time? Well, I mean, eventually. Never reading those again. They still make those? Probably. They're they're probably all about Shia LaBeouf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would read that. You should you should put that up on Kickstarter. Yeah, like my 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 name is Josiah Puffy Pants, and you know what I keep in my puffy pants? Grenades, and I am going to throw them at you right now. Deal with that. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. You know, you you can you can make, but let's face it. You would never forget Josiah Puffy Pants after that point. No, no, you wouldn't. You were talking about that boar for a while, weren't you? Uh, yeah. I a assumed, while back. I, I assume you're going to cut most of that out of the episode. No, probably not. <laughs> so the thing about it is, everything that I know right now is that you have a card game. That's it. That's all I know. If you ever wanted to take on the role of, uh, say, a bear and yes. experience what it's like to... Uh, <laughs> eat food as a bear and go through a hibernation cycle, then this game is for you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All about bears. We found the game. It feels like you were here not too long ago, and usually people need at least like a year break between times talking to us. But not you. <laughs> you are a trooper. You came back without hesitation. It's maybe. a slow month. It's a slow it's a month. Slow, <laughs> it's a slow month. Well, you know, no. that's how we get most of our guests on. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, nobody learns to be a game designer by listening to the melodious sound of my voice. I can just be whatever I want. That's the, that's so, the joy of role-playing games. <laughs> that is the joy of role-playing games. So see? Suck it, Alex. I was right. You were wrong. Uh, I didn't it's mean all- to do that, Alex. I'm sorry. The thing that I find is most difficult to teach, or that is essentially impossible to address in a workshop situation, is to help someone figure out what it is that they want to do. I'm not really a businessman. I like to draw on stuff. And <laughs> when business comes up, my eyes kind of glaze over and I sort of zone out and I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah, you know, that's yeah. me. I, I like <laughs> to design stuff and I like to figure stuff out. I don't want to have to deal with the business aspect of it. Yeah, exactly, right? Oh, like I, I want to make games. I'm maybe interested in doing this as a career. How might, might I do that? And you... Choose your own adventure and different. I see. To crowdfund your game, turn to page 79. Hire a graphic designer, turn to page 114. <laughs> and and almost exactly correct. Just from your perspective as an expert, um, our robot's going to take <laughs> the world just want to know for future reference. Okay, so I'm going to be very honest with you. In every okay. robot that I've ever made and just like initially turned on has tried to attack me. <laughs> well, either me or somebody else like... Uh, you know, I I had this robot that was supposed to pick up cans and help recycle, and what it did was just like it went full throttle at the person next to me, and they like tried to attack. And they didn't teach these robots Asimov's three laws of robotics. Yeah, like, well, eventually, all the robots did what they were supposed to, but there's always right. like that first one. Like I also did a robotic hand where it just like went for the heart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Skynet is interested in this. <laughs> oh, God, and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Don't disparage Keanu Reeves. Did you not see John Wick? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, dude, John Wick was really good. I like part two, too. But that's, that's beside the point. We're talking about Oscar Wilde. We, literally, the Keanu Reeves of the Victorian era. <laughs> and uh, getting back to the actual game, which I guess we were talking about at some point. Um, well, an hour ago or something. Yeah, yeah. We're improvising the episode, don't worry. <laughs> that, that is not the end of every adventurous tale that they want to tell. <laughs> no. that's, that's not the thing they want on the headstone at the end. Killed by Joe, I don't know his last name, he was in a cave of cuddles, just go with it. <laughs> Killed it's... by walking into the world's <laughs> most obvious trap. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it! <laughs> we had a lot of fun Everybody on the show. Everybody roll new characters. <laughs> Everybody roll new characters. You want to go back into the cave of cuddles, loot the body, see if you can be, you can get to fight with Joe again. <laughs> you enjoy. And 
he was like, yeah, we've got one copy, but um, I'm saving it for my friend because he's actually going to use it. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, really? Oh. And he was like, he was like, I mean, if you really want it. And I was like, it's fine. Oh my God. And so I did not get the book. And that's why I don't remember what book it was because I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it wasn't that good. You didn't even get to buy it. I didn't even get to buy it. I would throw caution to the wind and just hope that people liked my platform, which I'm still going to say is is a hot wing centric. I still think there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot worth pursuing in that platform. Far superior to barbecue. Oh yeah. Um, throughout the world, so you're going to gain more titles and trophies. So you know, if at one point you're going to be Nathan, the savior of rocking chair, the scourge of the three seas type thing, and you'll keep sounds getting more right. and more titles. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Which, uh, it sounds more and more like my 5e game. <laughs> <laughs> Buy me a pizza once in a while. <laughs> you know, all the good stuff. Put pineapples on it. No, Nathan, stop. Oh, yeah, wow. Are we going to have this debate? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. Pineapples are a topping. That's all you need to know. Um, <laughs> this was a great episode. Thank, thank you all for coming. <laughs> 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 That's all I need. I, I can have a stegosaurus, and I can grow uh, sunflowers off of its back. And that's, that's basically basically that's kind of like a bulbasaur. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of in the general. Okay, this is great. Yeah, it's actually the point of view of the hero, as you don't know that. Mm. Because <laughs> we all need, no matter what story it is, yeah. the reason that we all go into these same, we watch these movies that have the neophyte who's having the world explained to them and all that stuff isn't just for the expedition. It's because that gives us somebody to relate to. So right. you are essentially playing the part of a hero in any story because you are inexperienced with whatever is going on. Aha, perfect. Don't, don't let that go to your head, Nathan. I just did. <laughs> Too late. It is the first time I've been on the show. Yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of amazing, but also very true. Right. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, that's okay, because you're really Delve's dad anyway. <laughs> so... I don't think you'd want to admit to that. Um, I don't... Is it, can I be the godfather instead? You can be the godfather, as okay. long as if you, if you don't make us an offer we can't refuse, I'm fine with that. I haven't yet. I'm gonna look in and be like, so, we actually had people unsubscribe. <laughs> Exactly. We had negative views. I don't. People unsubscribed while we were recording this episode because they just knew. People actively put the episode back into the iTunes store. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you say something horrifically offensive? Put it right at the end of the episode so that people hate listen to it. Oh, pineapple pizza. So <laughs> there we go. There we Done. go. Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. <laughs> so I have not actually played Five E yet. What? Uh, or yeah, yeah. he hasn't. <laughs> I. It is the easiest, most. It's so I, easy. I know. It makes, every, I, it makes life so much easier. I, <laughs> nothing stopping you from putting your players in a Jello world because you think it'd be hilarious. Oh yeah, there's going to be gummy bears in mine. Oh, I no. can totally see uh, <laughs> cannibalistic yeah. gummy bears. <laughs> there's the cannibalistic Can gummy bears. Somebody... So they eat each other? Yeah, but because yeah. that's delicious. I mean, if you if everyone was literally made out of gummies, would you not be tempted? Yeah. I can't uh, I can't rightfully say I have an answer to that. <laughs> that would Alex would position. like to neither confirm nor deny that he would eat other people if they were made of gummy bears. <laughs> oh, only if they were made of gummy bears? Yeah. Oh, okay. Totally, yeah. I thought, <laughs> I thought we weren't talking about specifically that. If you can weaponize a windmill, that's a pretty... Good power, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's, it's a windmill full of corpses, Nathan. <laughs> oh, it's an undead windmill. <laughs> no, it's just full. undead windmill. <laughs> it's full of corpses. I think that's a zombie card. windmill. No. <laughs> if I say the word Shrizendo, what do you uh, think of? Pasta. Um, You're not wrong. Well, you are a little bit, but that's okay. All right. What What do you think of when we say the word uh, pronounced correctly, which is scherzando? <laughs> Music. Ooh, oh, that's correct. So this was a me thing. All right, never mind. <laughs> no, everyone pronounces it Shirzando. Um, it's totally normal. I said what I wanted to play as a player character, and you can't technically do it in D&D &D under the current rule set, 
And was so it the unicorn? It was the rainbow unicorn, Alex. I want to play a <laughs> rainbow unicorn. I don't know Bull why crap. everybody... No, you there. can. In my game, yes. you can play a gosh darn rainbow unicorn. Yeah. The Hoof and Horn Detective Agency is open for business, Alex. That's right. <laughs> That's so I will... cute. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he was. Snowball the unicorn is, is a detective. He got tired of how, you know, corrupt the system was and started his own detective agency. I have a whole backstory for this. I love it. I'm going to I'm going to tease that. I mean, I'll, I'll figure a way yeah. to weave it in because that is genius. And I'll tag you something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think if you sat to play with all four of us, you could probably match the real person with a player based on them. Yes. But maybe not like make a, a, a direct um, comparison between one person and their characters. Maybe except for my wife. Uh, <laughs> who is the inspiration for Lily, and she is very much Lily. You know what I'm realizing? We still haven't determined what we're calling this. Delve after hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're thinking of delve after dark, delve after hours. It sounds so dreary delve. if it's after dark, though. Um, Game of Thrones, the board game, and she loses, and she's angry. And she plays Catan, and she loses, and she's really angry. And then she plays Pandemic, and then everyone loses, because it's a cooperative game and she's super <laughs> happy because and they ask why then everyone loses because matt leacock made a brutal game uh, basically yes and yes. they ask her why why are why are you happy we just lost but she says it's not about me winning it's about you losing first and foremost i think the game's got to be pretty accessible you got to be able to to pull it off the shelf and be able to learn it and teach it without a tremendous amount of overhead uh, when i'm teaching a game i always try to get a sense of whether i'm feeling like I need to apologize when I'm teaching rules because they're mm. too long or too too convoluted. And, and if I feel like that, then I know that I have to cha- make a change uh, if I'm trying to do a gateway game. I got to do Dwarf Fortress. We're going to see if we can yeah. make you do Dwarf Fortress on well, stream and watch you rage. Well, worse than you do when you play golf with your friends. Or the, the dating <laughs> sims that you keep insisting I play. Those were fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I am not... <laughs> <laughs> Claren, you are my Waterloo. At, at one point I mentioned, oh, hey, well, what if we, I, I've got all these ideas, what happens to the villains after the shopping mall? And the group just went dead quiet and looked at me, and I had this bit of this vague feeling that something, I had just said something uh, incredibly wrong. And I was not invited back after that point, because <laughs> I found out later I had suggested playing the game wrong, in a way that was not supported by the rules, because the rules said you played in the shopping mall. <laughs> so how's that? How's that group doing? Absolutely no idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, the D twelves are used mostly because they're the most dwarf like of all dice. How are they dwarf like <laughs> dice? <laughs> they're so they're so stout. Surprised you didn't go with like a, a D three hundred. or something. <laughs> <laughs> That would have way too much swing. I will say, the, the D12 is definitely a stocky dice. Uh, let's say I decide that my character, you know, between sessions, did a Rocky-style montage where I was just in training, and uh-huh. I just, I come back to the table, and I say, hey, GM, I, I did the whole, you know, getting strong now uh, thing. I did Eye of the Tiger. Uh, now I'm four levels higher, and my strength is uh, 25. So just if you could just denote that on your piece of paper there, that would be great. I don't think I'd get away uh, with that, though, would I? Well, that that sounds like uh, the actions of an insane person. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so we put it at the front, and I hope that works. <laughs> no, no, it's it's good, because sometimes, you know, people can get lost when it's a new game, and it, it's helpful to have some examples, just... Get them started. And it says at the beginning, like, just to review the topics and then come back later as you need them. So. <laughs> You'll figure it out. You'll Don't worry. Out. Here you go. Yeah. You joined the police first and got pushed out, and that's why you're a detective. You can't be part of oh. legitimate law enforcement uh, because when you tried, they found out you weren't dirty and they found a way to get you off the force. And so now you're a private eye. You, you work Ooh. for yourself and independent contract. Yes, yeah, it wasn't my choice. I got for they framed me for something, and they said that I couldn't be on there anymore. Exactly. They yes. So maybe, now now you got to clean up your name too. Yeah, I got to clean up my name. Snowball the Rainbow Unicorn will have his name scrubbed yeah. clean. <laughs> I feel still like a like a nerdy outsider. Like I think that's right. why I liked 
being a producer is like I want to put like the cool people you know in a room um, whether you know you've heard about them or not and then let them do their thing like I'm a, I'm a facilitator for cool kids <laughs> at heart it's not a bad profession to get into facilitating cool kids yeah sounds like there's money in that there's not I would <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> I was gonna say Oh, if only, I was like, man. I think you're being sarcastic, but let me clarify in case there's any, you know, children who are young and impressionable. Yeah. You do not go into games and you do not go into streaming uh, for the money. Now, podcasting, that's where the money's at. Oh, yeah. So. Is, is There's money in this? <laughs> what? Oh, are you kidding? I'm not going to give Todd any more ideas. And I'm almost tempted <laughs> to say very Skyrim, but it just, it's going to come back. And I don't need this, that kind of necromancy in my life. So I'm going to say... Right. Let's bury Just Dance 3, even though I defended Just Dance 2. I'm starting a war between them. <laughs> yes. Clearly, 2 was the superior. <laughs> I haven't even played it. If anyone has any suggestions on, like, the ultimate Dell episode, feel free to throw it at us. Definitely <laughs> the first consensus. one I showed up in. Definitely. Okay. What time is it there for you, Seagoat? 3 in the morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was I'm gonna usually... say it's probably five hours ahead. I actually have my players sometimes call me Daddy Master instead. Um, Daddy Man. It, oh, cool. it is, yeah. Daddy Master is just it's just weird enough to really put him on edge. Yeah. Um, but then like we're all friends and it's just familiar enough that it's it's yeah. a weird fun joke. Oh, that's fun. You know what would be even better if it was Daddy Manser? It would be like yeah. instead of instead of like a necromancer or pyromancer. You conjure yeah. daddies. <laughs> that would be the best idea. <laughs> That's all you do. It would be like it would be like Dream Daddy, but you they, you're <laughs> but you can conjure that yourself. That's my new char- That's my next character. I'll daddy be a daddy Mancer. Mancer. Daddy yeah, Mancer. I'll just I'll just summon hot dads to do my uh, <laughs> do my fighting for me. I like to be pretty obvious exactly what you're doing when you open the book. Like, oh, okay. Uh, space pirate, and we're going to be singing. Aha! So there's my title. Right. <laughs> um, one of the things that's, that's really cool thematically about Cahokia mm. is um, in the year 1050, Cahokia was just the largest of the villages near the confluence of the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. Mm. And then 50 years later, in 1100, it was a city, an honest to God <laughs> real city. And it, this happened. In a single human lifetime. But see, now I have such an affinity for monks because it's like then I oh, then no, I start. You're one of those. I'm one of the monks. <laughs> I like Bulbasaur <laughs> and I like monks. <laughs> That's who I am. My, my two least favorite things. So uh, one of the one of the players. I often tell my players when we're going into a campaign is, you know, pick a character who might make some bad decisions. Um, <laughs> yeah. This might get a little intense, you know. Be aware, but in horror, you almost need it. Um, yeah, it, it, it the the genre requires a certain amount of you know we need to get you scared so that your characters will be like will be responding appropriately to the horrible situation that you're in. Mm-hmm. It's a collaborative event. The character choices that I have in mind, the clan I might choose, the um, ambitions for that character, the mm-hmm. desires might not be compatible with what the other players at the table want to play or what the story the storyteller wants to share with them. Yeah. It's right. really fair of me to make my character in a vacuum like that. However, right. mm-hmm. however, because <laughs> it's such a great question, I'll answer it in a different way. Okay. I want to see Jigglypuff like uh, judging the voice. <laughs> and just like like hearing a voice that, that Jigglypuff doesn't like and pulling the top of the microphone off and just drawing a mustache on whoever's face it is. Yeah, just leaping up on stage. Jigglypuff! And then you just like, just start. You do that really well. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but <laughs> no, it's amazing. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> isn't isn't that a really really pretty silver Githyanki scimitar, Nathan? Ooh. It is. It is not cursed. I identified it. He said it's not cursed. <laughs> not yeah, cursed. That's a very specific terminology, right there. Okay. Not cursed. It is. It is. It sounds like something yeah. I would have written. You know, fox, wildkin, otters, um, mm-hmm. rabbits, and badgers all described. But most people are probably going to be the otter. Yeah, well, the great thing is I hadn't come up with the otter thing. I only had the other three in a play test. And somebody said, why aren't there otter kin? Mm-hmm. I said, there are now. Uh, a few times on the show, you had made mention about how you can't 
copyright game mechanics. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm now suddenly concerned someone tried and won a court case. So, you're not gonna be happy about this. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> People, so my, my trick to networking is basically just, you know, if, uh, if you meet someone that's done something you like, just honestly gush about it, you know? Like, uh, yeah. you know, oh man, five, year, five years ago you did this card that had this style and it had this mechanic, or you wrote this joke or whatever. Um, so that, that's my first trick is just, you know, gush honestly about the stuff you like and the work that you know, other people have done. And uh, trick number two is just, you know, if you're in a situation where you can drink, that always makes it easier. Oh, um, yeah. So, that's and being, being the drinking quest guy, yeah, there's, uh, I've got to, you know, sometimes play that up a little bit. I think that it's about time that I warm up the old pipes, get on that piano, and sing you a happy little uh, oh, holiday oh. song. Oh, 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 no. That, no, oh. no, 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 don't, no, 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 Morgan! Oh, uh, announcement! We are experiencing uh, technical difficulties, I guess you could call them, and uh, homicidal tendencies. Please, stand by. He called upon um, an organization known as Inside, the internationally known society of individuals of dubious existence. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you might have to put that in the chat so I can reference it, because I can't write that fast. It took me literally a whole day to figure out how to build that acronym. <laughs> <laughs> I love your creative use of known. Ah, hey, Alex, I got the brownie. Um, it looks a little messy. Did something yeah, happen? Uh, someone stop. Don't worry about it. Uh, can you get the uh, bleach? Okay, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, you gotta get this blood out of the carpet. This is a rental. And suddenly there's a blue three-dimensional figure standing in front of you. He has puppy, puffy pants, and he's um, tossing a grenade in his right hand. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey there. The, uh, the exploit that, was, that had turned the show into a drinking game. I, I had mentioned that the polishing department had fixed that so that every time we said, it depends on your system... Uh, we, we were able to interlace it with, you could do it that way, and sure, why not? Um, turns out, the polishing department was actually using it as a drinking game, so they didn't actually bother to fix that. How flammable is this room? <laughs> Extremely flammable. If you ignite it, you will all die. I love how hard you are trying to circumvent all these puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's just... There you go! That sounds disgusting. Oh, wow. It's a real thing. That sounds really disgusting. <laughs> well, I can buy it now. <laughs> Only six bucks. I love candy canes. That's a bit... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do segment five, uh, like, like w once a month. Th the fifth segment is just, Alex makes a drink. <laughs> Uh, you, you, it's got to be just catching up with the drunks. So it's like whoever's whoever's sober enough this week to submit a drink recipe, go. Yeah, drinks and dragons. We'll just do yeah, that. yeah. Basically, so long as you have more than four ingredients, have four or more ingredients, it's okay. That is not how I expected that working, but okay. Well, welcome to the party. You gave me twenty rounds of potatoes and twenty gummy bears. <laughs> Guess what I'm gonna be doing? Spam attack. Gummy potatoes. <laughs> We're okay. gonna have gummy bears riding the potato like it's slim pickings at the end of how I learned to love the bomb. We're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> so what am I rolling I love it. for what this? Be? That sounds uh, hilarious. <laughs> okay, make a roll. That would be good. Deep fry it. But how am I gonna draw with it? Then? If you now you see you, you're missing the point again. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I'm st I still have to be able to access its chalkness. But I've got my chalk, I'm dipping and eating chalk and drinking brand whiskey out of a bottle outside. Of and then suddenly, I'm overcome by the need to express myself. What do I do? Yes. Flip yeah. the chalk around and yeah. start writing. Yeah, See? absolutely. Okay, yeah. I, uh, my mind went to... This is being recorded, right? Yeah, yeah this is. Yeah, this we're going to remember this that. Gold, this right? is gold. This is gold, yeah. The, this is the bit at the end, the extra bit. This if is the extra bit. Through, you get the <laughs> yeah, this is the, this sure. the part at the end where we get the chalk conversation. And if you don't mind, uh, going back to the discussion about the Kickstarters, I don't know if I told you guys this or not. I, I feel like I did, but um, actually, I think the very first one you did was Vast, right? 
Yeah, the first one we ever did was with David Somerville. Yep. And that's the one I bought. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I heard about it from you all. It's a very malevolent cave. It's trying to mm. uh, lay out all of the cave tiles, completely build out the cave, and then rapidly collapse all of those in, burying everyone else in a cave in for eternity. Ooh, I want to play the cave. I know I already want to play the cave. <laughs> you just want to collapse on people because you like Pebble Knockdown. I, I Total do. Pebble Knockdown. It's the I, ultimate I love... Total Pebble Knockdown. I, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I can't wait <laughs> okay. to play the cave. Alex, I'm going to be the cave. You be the knight. I'm going to crush all the right. knight. Sure. Uh, I this is really an episode I pushed on him. So if you don't like it, blame me. We can throw a boulder on him later if we you don't can, like we it. We can throw a boulder on him and it will be a critical hit, I'm sure. I know at least it'll, that it'll much. be a TPK. Sure. TTO. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what that to, uh total pebble knockdown? <laughs> <laughs> total party uh total party kill. To, total party I kill. I like that total pebble knockdown. <laughs> I'm going to use that from now off. Yeah.